Welcome to our video on Windows 7. This is part two of deploying Windows. We're going to be talking about working with VHDs, servicing images, manually deploying an image, and Windows deployment services. VHDs are virtual hard drives and they're used for virtual machines or starting with Windows 7 Server 2008 R2 they can also be used for storing files or even booting the computer. You can make VHDs with disk management or with disk part. So first we'll take a look at disk management. You can get in disk management either by just typing in disk management and it'll show up in your search list or you can go into computer management I'm just going to right click computer and go to manage I'll just take a minute to come up and basically this is the utility that you want to use to do anything with the hard drives. We've talked about that in earlier lessons. This time we're going to learn it, use it for a, a VHD. So I'm going to click on disk management. It will connect to the virtual disk service. and then I'll be able to see a snapshot of all the different disks that are in this particular computer. So you can see I've got one hard drive in here that's divided up into a couple of different partitions. I've got some disks that don't have any media in it. I'm going to go up under action and my two commands for working with VHD are create VHD and attach. Create VHD will allow me to create the virtual hard disk and attach it Attach would be used if I already have an existing VHD and I just want to mount it so I can see what's inside of it. And you want to be familiar with both of those commands. Usually you could create then attach, although technically create will do both of them. So I'm going to give this a path, uh, my VHD. It's going to automatically give it the VHD extension. I identify the size. I'm just going to do two, 20 gig. That should be roughly around 20 gig. And then I choose whether it's dynamically expanding or fixed size. Dynamically expanding is a great option if you need it to report to an operating system a certain size, but you know you're not going to save that much junk in it. So, for example, if I were creating an image um, or I was installing, let's say, Windows XP, I wanted to have a 20 gig hard drive, but I know I'm only going to use 3 gig then I'll choose dynamically expanding the operating system will think it's 20 gig but this will limit the size of my file uh, the only disadvantage to this is if I do know for sure I need 20 gig and I'm concerned about running out of si you know space in my hard drive then I would want to do fixed size because that will immediately grab all the space it would take 20 gig on my physical hard drive and then I know I've allocated that space so usually we use fixed size when we're dealing with something like a virtual machine or or Hyper-V or something where I want to make sure that I've allocated that space for that drive here I'm going to do dynamically expanding because I know we're not going to store 20 gig of data in there and I'm looking to keep the file size small uh, but you choose whatever is appropriate for the particular project so I'm going to hit OK it's going to create my VHD and then it's going to mount it and it's actually installing the driver for the virtual hard drive. So that'll just take a second. Okay. It installed the driver. and there's my hard disk. Now the computer doesn't really know 
the difference between a virtual hard drive and a regular hard drive. So I still have to go through the same process I would go through with a real hard disk. I've got to initialize it. And then I've got to create a partition in it or volume in it. So we'll just do a simple volume. Give it drive letter E is fine. NTFS with a quick format is fine. I'll even go ahead and give it a label of my VHD and then finish. So regardless if you make it in disk management or if you make it in uh, disk part out of the command line, you still have to, once you create and attach the VHD, you still have to work with it as if it were a real disk. So it's going to format it and then it will apply my drive letter and in just a second here we should see the box come up letting me know that I have a new drive available to me. So there's my VHD, it got drive E, I can go into computer open that up and there's the virtual hard drive, if I double click it it looks, it acts just like a regular hard drive, but anything that I put in this drive E is actually getting stored in this file right here, the myvhd.vhd. So, it's pretty much how the virtual hard drives work. Now to do this via the command line, we would use disk part. So I'm going to go into a command prompt. I want to open it as administrator. and I'm going to type disk part which will put me into my utility and the first thing we need to do is issue the command to create the virtual disk so I'm going to do a create vdisk first argument is file equals and I put it in quotes wherever I'm going to create this so I'm going to create it as disk part vhd dot vhd I set the maximum size and this is in megabytes so I'll just do a 250 meg drive and then I can have my type be expandable or fixed and there's my virtual disk um, next thing we're going to do is attach it so I'm just going to type in attach VHD Oh, it, actually, it's attached V disk. You should just pick right up on it. Okay, there it successfully attached it. So if I do a list disk, okay, we can see that disk number three is my V disk. Again, we're still going to deal with, with it like a normal disk. So I'm going to have to create partition primary, which will create a primary partition on that disk. And then I'll do a format fs equals ntfs. And we'll do a quick format. Should be fairly quick because it's only 250 megabytes. and then I'll do assign to assign this a drive letter and now I should see another disk inside a computer which is my disk G that's got 226 megabytes okay. the overhead that the, where the other megabytes went to is because it's NTFS NTFS has a certain amount of overhead to start with so that's where that you know 20 meg is gone to and so when you have a small disk like this, NTFS gives qu quite a bit of overhead to that particular disk. If I want to make my VHD bootable, I can use either BCD Edit or BCD Boot. So we're going to take a look at BCD Boot. 
So I'm going to go back into my administrative command prompt and we'll just real quick do a bcd boot forward slash question mark shows us the syntax and we're going to be doing something similar to this middle command here we'll go ahead and make that g drive the smaller of the vhds we created bootable so i'm going to do a bcd boot c windows you have to tell it where windows is installed so it can grab the files and s points it to another volume so we're going to point it to the g volume and so it's going to run that it's copying all the files and now that drive is bootable. If we want to see what this did, I'm going to go into computer and you can see it's taken up uh, maybe another 20 meg on that hard drive. We go in, it doesn't look like there's anything, but I'm going to hit my alt key. That gives me my menu bar. We're going to go up under tools, folder options. I'll go over to view and tell it go ahead and show me hidden files don't hide protected operating system files it's not too happy with me for that but I'm determined and then I hit OK and then it shows me what it did so it copied in the boot manager it made this boot folder with all the different languages available it's got your mem test there all sorts of things so this makes it bootable my next step would be to go in with bcd edit and add g as a choice to my menu of places that I could boot from. But actually I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but that would be the next step. That's why you want to combine those commands together. Next we're going to talk about servicing images. And basically we use DISM to do this. So we're going to take a look at mounting an image with DISM, inserting a driver into an image, and then inserting an update into an image. And these are important things because historically in order to update an image you had to actually pull that image down recreate your reference machine update it and then re-image it again which is a very time-consuming process DISM allows us to service those images without having to actually recreate those reference machines which makes a much faster much more streamlined process so we're going to take a look at that so in order to start servicing our image we want to go make sure that you've made an image we went through that in the first part of this lesson so I've actually copied this image onto a removable hard drive which is drive I and the name of the image is myimage.wim in order to mount the image I need to make a blank folder that I can mount it into so I'm going to go into the C drive and make a new folder in here called mount and that's where we're going to mount it into just arrange our windows here and you're also going to need to have the wake installed in order to get to DISM so we've already got the wake installed the Windows Automate Installation Kit and I want to go ahead and open the deployment tools command prompt Let's try that again do a run as administrator and go into our deployment tools command prompt so first we can take a look at the syntax of DISM. So it's DISM forward slash question mark. And these are the switches that you want to be familiar with. Um, this one's used to mount the Windows image, unmount the Windows image. After we've done the changes, we can go ahead and commit them, get info, remount. So first we need to start with our mount command. So it's going to be DISM mount windows image I tell it which windows image to mount that was I colon backslash my image